until the Democratic convention is over to firm up his economic proposals. Here now, his new stance on the minimum wage. What would you set the federal minimum wage? It doesn't at? have to be. Well, I, I would leave it and raise it somewhat. You need to help people. And I know it's not very Republican to say. Well, give me, give me 10 bucks. People, but 10? I would say 10. I would say 10. But All right. with the understanding that somebody like me is going to bring back jobs, I don't want people to be in that $10 category for very long. But the thing is, Bill, let the states make the deal. Yeah, but the let the states make the decision there is what Trump's uh, position is on minimum wage. Trump's increased clarity comes as Hillary Clinton's closest ally, Governor Terry McAuliffe, says that she will flip-flop on her opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal uh, if she is elected president. He told Politico, quote, listen, she was in support of the TPP. There were specific things in it she wants fixed. Trump is firing back with this, his own tweet on this, saying, as I have been saying... Crooked Hillary will approve the job-killing TPP after the election, despite her statements to the contrary. Joining me now to weigh in on the presidential trade wars, U.S. Chamber of Commerce President and CEO, Tom Donahue. Tom, good to see you. Great to see you. Thank again. you so much. And now we're seeing this back and forth over the TPP. I know large multinational corporations want that TPP in place. Is that right? Well, yes. And thousands and tens of thousands of small companies that trade all around the world want it there. The fundamental issue is that for either candidate, if, and then nobody's talking about this, if we don't get off a one, one and a half percent economic growth, get up to two and a half and three, we can forget increasing jobs, driving this economy, and putting people back to work. And it's the same thing in some of the conversations about hydrocarbons and energy. Yeah. You want to put all those people out of work. You don't want to have the availability of the energy that draws manufacturing to the United States. They're talking about all kinds of issues except the fundamental issue, how do we drive growth? How do we really put people back to work? So what's your solution in terms of ensuring that we have the right trade deals with our friends overseas, but at the same time not creating an environment where it's actually hurting workers in this country and, and creating new jobs? The trade deal that was negotiated with all of the countries on the Pacific Rim is geopolitically very important to us, our relationship with China. It, the agricultural people are very happy with it, and that's very unusual. The technology people like it a lot. They've fixed the problems with the capital markets. We have to fix some things with pharmaceuticals. You do that without opening up the agreement, and then you have an issue where the American people are going to have, and American workers are going to have a much better chance to sell things to people in that whole region. You kill it, and somebody else owns the relationship, and somebody else gets the business. Well, we've got, obviously, uh, uh, the largest market that everybody wants to sell their goods to Americans, but there are also enormous populations out there that American companies want to get their goods, like selling goods to China, the 1.1 or 1.3 billion people in China. How do we do that in a fair way that people feel that the U.S. is not at a disadvantage? Well, you have your finger right on the point there. Ninety-five percent of the people that we want to sell something to don't live in the United States. If you look at the growth in exports to China, they continue to go up. And China's huge, and it will continue to go up. And then remember, a lot of the imports are the kind of imports of high quality that go to Walmart and Target and those stores where mid-America mid wants to go shop, take that away and their costs go up. This is a very complicated thing, and ending trade agreements, and it's, it's a joke to listen to them all, mm. ending trade agreements, which we won't do, uh, is going to put us in a worse position than we are today. Will Trump's hardline stance on eliminating some of these free trade agreements be more likely to draw in Sanders supporters, do you think, in light of Clinton? basically saying that she will reverse her stance, or her, her ally saying she will reverse her stance after getting elected? Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with what Trump says. Uh, but, and I'm not sure where the Sanders people are going. I mean, they were the young people excited about a lot of things that Sanders talks about. I don't know where they're going to go. i just say this. We've got to be very sure in this country that we have a balance, mm. that we have serious discussion of issues, and that means we've got to go out and elect a House and a Senate that are going to provide that balance and help us 
press whoever is the president to do what's right. Are you worried that the Republicans lose the majority in the Senate? I'm working very hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We just got the durable goods report out, Tom, down 4%. To what do you attribute this crawl of an economy that we're talking about? Growth well, is under 2%. I think a small amount of it is that the, the companies are holding their cash. They're listening to these debates in the political process. They're looking at the explosive over-regulation of the economy. They're listening to all the arguments about how we should break up uh, the uh, financial institutions. And finally, they're being told every day that we're not going to use hydrocarbons. Uh, when you put all that together, if I'm running a big company, or if I'm running a medium-sized company, I'm putting as much cash as I can in the bank because you're, you look at, well, here's what the issues, they're going down. Mm. All right, we believe that. Tom, good to see you. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, Tom Tanya, up Chamber of Commerce. We've